Hey Low Winners, it's Laudy6 here with another video, and today I'm going to rank every single mainland Chinese province on the Super Tropy S through F tier YouTube list. Uh, I've created a very complicated, amazing, beautiful setup here. I'm going to be using Photoshop and moving around some slides. As you guys know, S tier is the best tier of all the Chinese provinces, and F tier will be the worst, the lowest, the crappiest, the places you should absolutely avoid. As you guys know, Winston and I, through our travels, conquering southern China, conquering northern China, all of our motorcycle adventures, we've been to most of China. Uh, save for a couple places, but I'll try to be super fair. First rule, we will not be using Hong Kong, Macau, or Taiwan, because those are either different countries or special administrative regions, and they, they would just be on S tier. It would just be unfair. You guys know how awesome those places are. So why don't we just get into it? <laughs> Speaking of Chinese provinces, no matter what Chinese province you go to, you're going to be blocked from about 70% of websites on the internet. That's why I got to say thanks to NordVPN for actually sponsoring this episode. And it's the VPN of choice that I use when I travel not only around China, but actually around the world. You see, VPNs are super important because not only do they unblock the internet for you, but you can actually pretend you're in a different country. So a lot of places I go to, I don't have access to things like Netflix or in some of the countries I go to when I'm booking plane tickets or hotels, I'll actually get a different rate depending on where I am. So I use NordVPN to swap my location, go to a different country and bam, I'm there. I'm getting a better deal. I'm paying less money for plane tickets and hotels and all that kind of stuff that are region specific. Not only that, NordVPN keeps the prying eyes away from your internet traffic. So when I'm in different places using different internet connections, different unsecured Wi-Fi, that gives me the peace of mind that people are not snooping into what I'm doing. And it's an absolute must when I'm traveling around the world. But even when I'm back at home base editing, I use NordVPN to keep my internet secure. Don't forget to use the code nordvpn.com slash loudy6. Get a huge discount and help support the channel. Thanks. We're going to start off with Shanghai. You guys might call it Shanghai. Shanghai, foreign concession, a lot of foreign influence. Definitely the classier of the Chinese provinces. Um, it's, a, it's a massive city-state almost, but it's actually classified as its own province in China. And I've been there many, many, many times. It's a beautiful place. It's bustling. It's wealthy. Uh, at the same time, it's much more expensive than the rest of China. Uh, but there is a certain kind of feel that Shanghai gives you. Uh, definitely a good place. I'm going to put Shanghai, Shanghai, you're going to go in A tier for now. It's a cool place to be. You can get everything you need, foreign amenities. You can also go on the metro and go to the last stop and, you know, see the kind of rougher areas of China. It represents a lot of China. So I'm going to give a good A tier to Shanghai. Next, we're going to go with uh, good old Beijing, the capital. If you want to go to Beijing, you're going to, you're going to notice that it feels very, very Chinese, very, very commonest, lots of gray buildings, very polluted, um, but a young bustling kind of music scene, art scene, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, it does feel quite imposing to be around all of the central powers. Um, in Beijing, I don't know. It's, it's all right. I'm going to give Beijing a, a, a B tier. Okay, we're going to go to Qinghai. Now that's a random one to pick. Qinghai province is right next to Tibet, and actually most of the people that live there are Tibetan people. Uh, but Qinghai is the unrestricted Tibet, so you can go there as a foreigner. Unfortunately, it's just massive, massive plains. They do have that massive salt lake there, which is really pretty. Um, Qinghai though, I mean for an adventurer, I would say it would be a, a cool adventure, but I'm going to give that a C, a C tier. Tianjin. And Tianjin is a massive city-state, just like Shanghai and Beijing. But holy God, is it boring. It's literally one of the most boring places in China. It's uh, fairly newly developed. It definitely has like an old quarter, but most of Beijing is, or sorry, most of Tianjin is very drab. It's just not a fun place to be. I'm gonna give that an E, t e tier as my voice cracks because I'm going through puberty again, apparently. Uh, next, we're gonna head over to Shanxi, and that's with two A's. I have no idea why there's two provinces that sound exactly the same. Uh, Shanxi is a coal province. It's literally full of coal and pollution. Uh, but by and large, I'm going to give that an E tier. It's just a pretty gross, awful place. No offense to anyone from Shanxi. Next, we're going to go over to Anhui. Anhui is like the redheaded stepchild of Shanghai. This province is kind of the biggest contributor of all these like economic migrants into Shanghai. Um, 
it's got this city called Hefei, which is actually pretty cool. It's like a huge tech hub. But by and large, Anhui is like, I don't know, there's not a whole lot to see there. No offense if you're from Anhui. I'm gonna give that, I'll give that a, a D tier. We're gonna go to Chongqing. Chongqing sounds actually like a stereotypical Chinese word, doesn't it? It's kind of like when people try to imitate Chinese, like Ching Chong. Um, Chongqing, just flip it around. Chongqing is in the Sichuan area, so famous for spicy food, all that kind of good goodness. Um, huge, massive metropol metropolitan population. There's over 30 million people in the region. And uh, it's exciting. There's a lot of good art and music scene, kind of like Beijing. Um, it's growing. It's quite separate from some of the bureaucracy you see. There's a lot of conspiracies and a lot of scandals there, like Bo Xilai and things like that. So it kind of runs itself in a, in a way, to a certain extent. Chongqing's pretty cool, pretty chill. I'm gonna go with a, with a B tier with that one. Uh, next, we're gonna go to Jiangxi. Jiangxi is all the way down the south, right next to Guangdong. Uh, Winston and I used to go there all the time. Uh, it was a frequent stop on our motorcycle trips. Very lush, very green. Some of it's jungle, some of it's forest. It's kind of like the Georgia. I would say the Georgia of China. It's a bit rough, it's a bit rural, but the people were super friendly. Um, probably because it was so rural and undeveloped, Jiangxi always left a pretty good impression on us. Um, I'm gonna give that a C tier, just because there's nothing outstanding about it, but it's, it's a beautiful place. Shanxi, 1A Shanxi. I was gonna go right up there with his brother. Uh, he's gotta go up there. You got Xi'an, which is kinda cool. So yeah, I'm gonna bump it up to D tier, because Shanxi at least has Xi'an, and they have epic food. Uh, Rojiamo is kind of like this Chinese pita bread hamburger type thing. They get really mad when you call it a Chinese hamburger because apparently it's got a lot of food significance. Uh, but it tastes great. Super good food up there. So it's going to get a D tier even though it's polluted and really nasty. Uh, Sichuan. Sichuan is a massive province in western China. Also, um, there's some features about it. They speak Mandarin but they have this like really weird kind of Southwest Mandarin accent. And they're, they're famous for their food. I think Chengdu actually, the capital of Sichuan province is one of the only UNESCO declared world food cities. Um, and the food's epic, it's super good. And honestly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot down some of these Sichuan people that keep saying that foreigners can't eat spicy food. Because honestly, the, the spiciest thing that I've had in Sichuan doesn't even come close to some of the food I've had in other places around the world. Keep in mind, chilies are new world. So there's this theory amongst Chinese people that they've invented spicy food and invented the use of chili. And they think foreigners just can't handle it. And that's just absolutely not the case. I don't want to get off on a tangent here, but I think it's a little bit ridiculous to say that foreigners can't eat spicy food when it came from foreign lands. But anyway, very good food. Um, stereotype as well as it has the most beautiful girls apparently I don't know where they come up with these things like it's something about the the rivers and the mountains or something I don't know I'm gonna give it a C tier uh, Hubei Hubei is in kind of central southern China very hot uh, famous for being incredibly incredibly hot it's quite polluted um, it wasn't to my liking it wasn't to my liking I mean you got places like Wuhan huge hub for foreigners and stuff but it's I mean, it's just not as developed or nice as some of the other places. I'm gonna put that in a, in a D tier. Actually, I'm gonna drop Hubei down to E tier. I didn't have a good time there. I didn't have a good time there. I didn't really get a good impression of the, the locals either. Not to say they were bad, but they're, you know, they weren't as warm as some of the other provinces. Heilongjiang, Black Dragon River. This is China's northernmost province. And this is the crazy thing is that a lot of people think of China as like bamboo and hot weather and things like this, but Heilongjiang's all the way up near Russia. And actually on conquering Northern China, we went all the way up there, uh, right on the Russian border. Really fascinating place, um, incredibly cold. There's only like three months of warm weather in Heilongjiang and you'll see these guys, they like swim naked uh, in Harbin, the capital there. In the summer, they'll just go and like camp for months and swim naked, it's really bizarre. Uh, Heilongjiang though, it's, it's very different than the rest of China, even though it's Han Chinese people. It's full of Russian architecture, these kind of Cyrillic, beautiful onion domes, and the food, super cheap and hearty. I think foreigners love uh, Dongbei food, Northeast Chinese food, especially Heilongjiang, because you got a lot of bread. They eat bread instead of rice. They have stews, they have lots of meats. It's, it's super cheap, it's super awesome. I'm gonna give Heilongjiang um, an A tier, just because it's a, a bit of an anomaly in China. It's a little different. 
than the, your average, you know, normal province in China. Next, we're gonna go to Henan. Henan is like the home of the Han Chinese people. That's basically where they come from. And it's traditionally like thought of as the most Chinese province. It's also an awful place. Um, I don't want to make any ironic jokes there, but it's like literally one of the worst places I've ever been on, been to. There's actually like a subreddit. The, the capital of Henan is called Zhengzhou. There's a subreddit called Henan, Henan Porn. And it's basically just ironic photos of all the horrible things that you're going to see in Henan, like burning garbage and pollution and everyone kind of makes fun of having to go to Zhengzhou. Tons of English teachers and stuff there, but not a whole, not a whole lot of people like it. And honestly, if I didn't give Henan an F tier, I would get more hate from the Chinese people because like Chinese people hate Henan more than anything in the world. They have such bad stereotypes of like being thieves and stuff. It's really bad. Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure there's some nice people there. Actually, we, we did meet some nice people there. Our driver for conquering Northern China was from Henan. He was a nice guy, except he smoked like a chimney and he loved to litter. Uh, Hunan, Hunan province all the way down south, uh, bordering Guangdong, went there all the time. Hunan's got some stereotypes. Hunan's kind of the, uh, is the birthplace of Mao Zedong, Chairman Mao. Uh, very crass, very crass folk. Real salt of the earth people. We met some super nice people there, but we also ran into some of the worst bureaucracy in terms of like government people coming into your hotel room, not allowed to stay here, not allowed to stay there. Uh, you can't go to this town. I don't know why, we never got to the bottom of it, other than the fact there are, there are some minority regions there, but it didn't seem like there was anything to hide. Um, overall, our experience of Hunan was that many places in Hunan were absolutely gorgeous, and many places were absolute ghost town wastelands full of people that really didn't want us to be there. I'm going to drop that in E tier just because some of the scenery, some of the places we visited were pretty spectacular. Inner Mongolia. This is my old stomping ground. I lived there for a couple years. Now, it sounds weird because whenever I said I lived in Inner Mongolia to foreigners or Westerners, they think that I lived in Mongolia. But Inner Mongolia is just a province. It's like a buffer zone for China um, that kind of borders Russia and Mongolia. And there's only, I think there's only like five million actual Mongolians living in Inner Mongolia where there's like 20 million Han people. Um, but it's beautiful in the Eastern regions. The grasslands are spectacular. Um, absolutely awesome food. They eat tons of goat and lamb, which is like my favorite thing in the entire world. If you guys aren't eating goat, by the way, you're completely missing. I don't know why people, they're like, yeah, I'll have my lamb chop, but I won't eat goat. It literally tastes the same. So just eat some goat. Actually, it's even better sometimes. Inner Mongolia is awesome. You can have such an adventure there. The Western region where I lived is pretty polluted and pretty bad. Um, I lived in Baoto and it's just a massive steel plant basically. But once you're out of there, it's, it's super cool. And the people are super bro -y and fun. Lots of people love to ride motorcycles, especially off-road and stuff. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to give Inner Mongolia A tier. Fujian. Fujian province, uh, right next to Jiangxi, uh, in the east coast of China. The majority of old school Chinese immigrants you're going to meet in America are from Fujian. They're, they came over on fishing ships and stuff. And Unfortunately, Fujian has some of the worst food I've had in China. They have like kind of the weirdness of Guangdong and Cantonese food, but they just don't cook it very well. It's bland and not very nice. I don't like Fujian food at all. Um, so a lot of the people that came here and studied like Chinese American cooking, they're cooking your food and it's, it's not pleasant. Um, it's okay. It's pr pretty hot. Xiamen's super nice. Uh, I feel like beach town stuff. I'll give that a C tier. It's all right. It's pretty, pretty beautiful. Gansu. Gansu is a desert region. You can see it's kind of splintering from central China all the way up towards Xinjiang. Uh, it's super deserty, but there are some forested regions. I believe it is now the poorest province in China. Uh, lots of problems with droughts. Lanzhou is one of the most polluted places I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I don't know. I had a kind of fascination with it before, but I'm going to drop that in D tier because it's just not it. It's not a pretty place for the most part, especially in the cities. Guangdong, this is a place I've called home for years and years and years. That's where my wife's from. It's where pretty much I set up everything I did was in Guangdong. And that's traditionally called Canton. That's where you find Cantonese people on the border with uh, Hong Kong. They speak Cantonese. They're very, very different than the rest of China in terms of like their priorities. You'll see a lot less nationalism and stuff in Guangdong amongst the locals. They're more like business oriented. But holy God, holy Mao is it hot down there. It's like Literally more than half the year, it's like unbearably hot for someone like me. I don't know, if you like sweltering heat, you like Guangdong, but lots of good infrastructure. I'll give it a B tier. Uh, it's just too hot and 
a little too unwelcoming. The local Cantonese people are not the, the friendliest folk in China, that's for sure. Uh, Guangxi. Now you'll notice Guangdong and Guangxi almost have the same name. Guangdong is like the Eastern Guang and Guangxi, she means West. That's the Western Guang. Uh, quite similar people, the, a lot of them speak Cantonese there as well, but very, very poor. Um, beautiful though, you go to places like Yangshua and Guilin and stuff like that, really pretty. But yeah, it's, it can be also really run down and polluted as well in a lot of the cities there, especially in the border with Guangdong. Um, also super hot, but a little bit cheaper. And if you want an adventure, you're definitely gonna have a good time there. I'm gonna put, I'll put Guangxi in uh, C tier, C tier for now. Uh, next up we have Hainan. Hainan is maybe one of the worst places I've ever been in the whole world. It is now being touted as this like jewel or Hawaii of China. And that's just not the case. It's this tiny island on the southern coast, and it's not only the hottest place I've ever been, but it's so full of scams and ripoffs. You will pay like hundreds of dollars for one fish because they have so many tourists from Russia and mainland China that they'll pay the money. I don't get it. Hotels are incredibly expensive. The people are just looking for a buck. That is absolutely F tier. Hainan. Stop trying to contact me and pay me to do travel tourist videos there because it will, it will not be to your liking. I know you're gonna follow me around and tell me what to say and what to do, but I'm just not gonna do that because I really hate that province, no offense. Uh, Tibet, unfortunately, this is one of the provinces I have not been to. Um, there is absolutely no way they would let me or Winston in there with a camera and to actually cover things that we wanna cover. Too sensitive, uh, too political, too much turmoil going on there with the locals and the Chinese government. But from the pictures, it looks pretty beautiful. It looks pretty beautiful. Um, I'll pop that into, uh, into a D tier just because they won't let us in. And that's completely unfair on my part, but this list is not supposed to be fair. Uh, Xinjiang, another province that I haven't been able to go to. It's exact same reasons as Tibet. Um, looks pretty beautiful. Looks like it could be quite diverse. Lots of forests, lots of desert, lots of different interesting people. Like Uyghur people are totally separate from you know, the rest of China. They don't speak. Chinese, they don't look Chinese, a lot of them have blonde hair and green eyes and stuff like that. So, very exotic if you want some sort of central eastern flair. The stuff that's happening there right now, massive, massive shame for China and they won't let us in so I'm gonna have to drop that in D tier as well. Um, and I, my heart goes out to all the people affected in that region because it's pretty effed up what's going on. Yunnan province, this is, a, this is an interesting one. This is a very diverse and beautiful province. It's kind of high, like elevation wise, but it's all the way down south. So you have this super mild weather. It's like super nice all year round. They call it like the eternal spring place or something like that. We saw some really cool stuff in Yunnan. Um, the rice terraces, the rice fields, the, the snow, snow peaked mountains. The food is pretty cool. They actually have their own version of cheese, which is cool. Um, we had a great time in Yunnan. Lots of ethnic minorities and stuff. I'm gonna give uh, Yunnan a B tier. It is very hard to get through because the roads are so bad. Probably, probably the worst roads I've been on in China. So although I'm gonna give a B tier, but I mean a lot of bad things happened to us there. Our car was, the windows were smashed and all of our camera gear was stolen, which was terrible. Um, lots of heroin. We saw lots of syringes and heroin problems. It's right in the kind of golden triangle area. So a lot of drug issues there as well. Um, it would definitely be A tier if it weren't for those issues for sure. Um, Zhejiang province, this is Eastern, Eastern China. It's all right, it's kind of like a discount. Shanghai. Uh, there's a lot of rich, wealthy businessmen there. Used to be a lot of factories and stuff, but they've kind of moved up in the world. It's definitely more first world than a lot of the provinces we're covering now. Uh, they speak a really weird, like Shanghaiese, Eastern Chinese dialect, which you won't understand, trust me. Um, but it's all right. Yeah, we've got some beautiful places. Uh, but I don't know. I'm not a massive fan. I'll pop that in, uh, in C tier. Next, we got Guizhou. Guizhou is a weird one. It's like super poor, undeveloped, but it was such a beautiful place. Like the places we were going through in Guizhou really left an impression on us. It was so raw. It was amazing. The mountains, the roads, the, the people, everything was super amazing. Definitely a gem. Uh, I'm gonna give that an A. We had such a good time in Guizhou. It was absolutely beautiful. Stay away from like the central regions and go down towards like the rapeseed field area uh, on the border of the Yunnan and stuff. Super amazing place, absolutely beautiful. Uh, Jiangsu, Jiangsu and Zhejiang are pretty much the same. They're like brothers to each other. I don't know, not a huge fan. Didn't have an amazing time there, it's all right. Uh, Jilin, Northern China. Uh, Jilin, I'm gonna put in a B tier. Jilin's beautiful, it's got lots of forests and stuff, but the roads are wicked bad, especially for motorcycling. 
Um, keep in mind you're on the border with North Korea, so you have all that goodness over there if you really want to, you know, test your limits and go on the border and, you know, try to get shot or kidnapped or whatever. Literally right there, right in front of us is North Korea. Um, Jilin, it's like Heilongjiang, same type of food, very hearty, uh, lots of snow, very cold, but it was pretty cool. Uh, Liaoning province, Liaoning has got Dalian. Liaoning's pretty cool too, I'm gonna pop that in a B tier. Uh, all these are in, uh, sorry, Jilin, Liaoning, and uh, Heilongjiang. The, these are all in the northeastern region of China, so they have a lot of similarities, but Dalian was an old Japanese uh, concession, and that is a really cool city, it's really beautiful there. Um, nice beaches, good seafood. I had a good time there. Ningxia. Ningxia is a tiny little Muslim province. And when I say Muslim province, I mean that the Hui Muslim people. So these are Chinese people that are Muslim. They're Han Chinese, but they're Muslim. And they have their own ethnic group called Hui. They have some epic, epic food. Loved it up there. I'll, I'm going to give that an A tier, Ningxia. Um, really interesting to see Chinese people with all of these, you know, like religious uh, what's it called, like mosques and things like that, and really, really beautiful villages and stuff. I went to some really well-kept villages there and grilled some corn with some little boys on the side of the road. That was pretty cool. And people invited us into their homes for meals. It was such a good time. Uh, and finally, Shandong. Shandong province, you got Qingdao, you got the home of Chinese beer. Had a good time there. Uh, Qingdao is actually a German concession. We covered quite a bit there. We found this old fort. It was actually an old World War I bunker that we found that the Germans had built. It was really neat. Um, I'm going to give that a B tier. So as you can see, guys, I have now succinctly put every province. None of them got S tier. So now I have to bump some of these up because if I don't put anything in S tier, that's just not fair, is it? If I had to pick, I'm just going to pick one S tier. I'm just going to pick one S tier. Um, the one province that would really, I would definitely put up there in terms of travel, in terms of the local culture, um, what you can do there, in terms of outdoor stuff, food. I'm gonna have to bump up my bro, uh, Inner Mongolia. A lot of the memories I've had, remember this is a personal thing. That's just, this is how I feel. I had I have su such good memories up there, I had such a good time up there, and you know, I feel like you can really explore. You can get a taste of China, but you can also get a taste of something completely different. It's very wild, it's very cool. And there you have it, guys. I'll link a picture down below so you can see the entire tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I wanted to actually say something really, really, really important. And that's on, uh, there's a new channel, ADV Podcast. If you guys haven't checked this out, me and Winston do this uh, one hour live show. It's not just a podcast, it's not just audio. We have uh, pictures up, we have video up, we talk about current events in China, we talk about what's going on in the world. And I highly encourage you guys to go check that out because it's seriously, it's, I think it's one of the most interesting formats that we have on all of our different channels. So go check that out. Don't forget, if you guys want to see more, you can go to patreon.com slash 6 and you can support the channel. And every single Wednesday, you can click down below here, you can watch another Loudy 6 video at 1 p.m. EST. Over here, you can watch ADV China, motorcycle talk show on two wheels every single Monday at 1 p.m. EST. And right below that, you can watch Winston, Serpents and Egg, just in time for a beer every Friday at 1 p.m. EST. I want to say thank you so much, Loudy and I'll catch you on the next one.